Hello everyone, Physics here. Welcome to another tutorial. In this one we will be covering the usage of Laser Joint Direct Attack Munitions, or LJDAMs. This tutorial is not intended to be an extensive explanation on all the technical aspects of these weapons and their associated systems, but I believe that if you follow this tutorial, you will be able to use these weapons effectively. This tutorial is valid for all the LJDAMs we currently have in Falcon BMS, specifically GBU-49, GBU-54, and any other LJ names I may have missed. Let's get into it. Preparation In order to deploy these weapons using their GPS guided function in the pre-mode against static targets, the preparation is still required in the 2D screen, as described in my tutorial about JDAM usage in the pre-mode, which I will link in the description. It is also advisable to set the laser code for the weapons in the loadout screen prior to the mission. However, this is not a requirement. As we will see later, the laser code can be changed at any time when inside the aircraft. Setup inside the aircraft Once you're in the aircraft, as with other JDAMs, these weapons will have to be powered on prior to being used. I recommend doing this step while you're on the ground. Their power won't run out and you'll be sure that they will have plenty of time to do their alignment for when you get to your target area. Go to air to ground mode. As before, press the OSB next to power off to power on the LJDAMs. If you do no further changes, these weapons are now just like any other JDAM and can be used as such. If you press the OSB for the control page, this is where the laser code can be changed and the laser guided mode of these weapons can be activated. The first OSB is for the impact azimuth. On the Falcon BMS documentation, this feature is described as implemented, but despite following the procedure mentioned there, I have never been able to make it work. So it's either a misunderstanding on my part, or this feature isn't completely implemented. If in the future this changes, I will make a follow-up video to this one covering this feature. After that, we have L-Code. This is where you can change the laser code for the weapons in this station. Keep in mind that this step must be done on a station-by-station -station basis if you wish to use laser designation as guidance. Following that, we have Laser Command Mode, which is not implemented. Page 1, if you press it, takes us to the next page. We will cover this in a second as well. The Impact Angle, according to the BMS manual, isn't implemented, despite the fact that you can input numbers here. The Arming Delay is the time at which the fuse of the weapon will be armed after the weapon is released from the aircraft. Just above that we have the profiles. You can have up to four different profiles saved in which you can have different submodes, different impact azimuths and different arming delays. Finally, in order to activate the laser guided mode on these weapons, you need to go to page 2 by pressing this OSB and then notice this field laser receiver control it is currently set to off this means that the weapon is currently in a GPS guided function press this OSB once you will see that this field changes to after this means that once the weapon is released it will look for a laser designation if however the weapon cannot find a laser designation it will automatically revert back to a GPS guided function and it will follow the last GPS coordinates it acquired prior to being released. From the sensor point of interest or SPI in question, be it the TGP, a mark point, a steer point or whatever SPI was in use. Also keep in mind that the activation of this field must be done on a weapon per weapon basis. So if you activate the laser control receiver 
on these stations after you release the first bomb you will have to come back to this page to change the laser control receiver to after on the second bomb this goes for the other station as well one final step that should be done before using these weapons in laser guided mode is to go on to the laser page in the DED once you're here change the TGP codes to match the code that the weapons will be looking for after they are released Change the LST code if applicable as well. Make sure to change the air to ground mode from training to combat and set the auto laser time as required. Deploying the weapon in laser guided mode. Once you're in the target area and you've acquired the target, perform your final checks making sure that the laser code is correct and that it matches the one in the laser page on the DED. Also make sure that the weapon guidance is set to laser guided. Perform these checks for both stations loaded with these weapons. Once you've acquired the target, proceed with the normal CCRP attack as demonstrated in my previous laser guided bombs video. Once the weapon is released, maneuver the aircraft in such a way that the TGP is looking towards the right at the target to maximize the TGP's view of it. Since the weapon is now 30 seconds out from impact, as I configured in the laser DED page, my laser is auto firing, as you can see with the L blinking on both the DGP and the HUD. Check. Come around and engage another target, but make sure to check the configuration for the next bomb. And there we have it. LJDMs are an excellent weapon, providing both unmatched versatility and great accuracy, due to the fact that, unlike normal laser guided bombs, which will simply fall ballistically when the laser isn't firing or they can't see the designation, LJDMs will use the GPS coordinates prior to release to guide themselves in. Also, the fact that they can be used just like normal JDAMs is an excellent tool. In the case that the weather or smoke becomes an issue around the target area. Personally, I feel that the trade-off of having to check each weapon prior to release is more than worth the benefits that these weapons offer. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.